This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecuritylc.com. The source code annotation language level 200 presentation introduces the role that the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle fulfills in trusted application development. It also provides an overview of the Microsoft source code annotation language and how it can be used to augment the accuracy of reported vulnerabilities by static code analysis tools. A demonstration of using the source code annotation language with Microsoft Visual Studio and Microsoft Prefast will be given. This presentation will then conclude with a discussion of the annotation recommendations as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. Addressing this subject matter will enable our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. In this presentation, we will complete an overview of the Microsoft SDL, the Microsoft Source Code Annotation Language, annotation classes, and annotation recommendations as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL. The Microsoft SDL is a holistic and comprehensive approach that leverages education, process, technology, an executive commitment to consistently create more secure software internally within and external of Microsoft. Since 2004, all internal Microsoft developers have been required to adhere to the SDL, and Microsoft has updated the SDL every six months to address any emerging threats since its inception. True to its name, the SDL was created to complement rather than disrupt the software development lifecycle. The core phases and principles of the SDL include the training phase, the requirements phase, the design phase, the implementation phase, the verification phase, the release phase, and finally the response phase. In the training phase, every Microsoft developer must complete mandatory security training focusing on secure application development practices. Training sessions include topics such as threat modeling, secure development and testing practices, and security for application development managers. In the requirement phase, requirements for security and privacy must accompany functional requirements of the software that's being created. Such requirements may include the use of encryption, authentication, and other security measures based on the business requirements, exposure, and sensitive data. To that end, a security and privacy risk analysis is performed at this stage. In addition, the threshold for security and privacy, or bug bar, is defined during this phase to ensure that bugs with certain severity are addressed and resolved before the software is officially released. For the design phase, eradicating coding bugs with security implications is not sufficient. Design vulnerabilities can have a substantial detrimental impact on security and are much more difficult to address during the verification phase. To that end, Threat modeling is a critical SDL requirement and a Microsoft security innovation that is recognized by analysts as the next evolution in creating more secure software. Through threat modeling, architects and developers at Microsoft are able to approach security in a structured and methodical way from an attacker's perspective. This allows Microsoft to identify and reduce attack surface and mitigate the risk of potential security design issues. The implementation phase is the application code development phase where code is written by developers using industry best practices and analyzed with both internal and external tools such as static code analyzers and special security debuggers to help ensure that those best practices are being followed. Requirements are also specified by the SDL in this phase to ensure that applications are built using the latest compiler versions and built-in compiler protection features. The verification phase is the quality assurance phase within which rigorous security testing is conducted in addition to typical functional testing procedures. In the release phase, the final security review is the major milestone that a Microsoft product team must pass in order to release a product under the SDL. During this meeting, security experts and the development team review all of the activities mitigations, and security artifacts that are relevant to the project in order to ensure that the security quality requirements are satisfied. 
During this phase, the product team defines a response plan describing procedures, accountabilities, and contact information in case security vulnerabilities are discovered after the product is optional, operational and used by the customers. In the response phase, after an application is released, the Microsoft Security Response Center, or MSRC, handles any security issues that are uncovered in the weld and mobilizes product teams within Microsoft to provide timely fixes for security issues. In summary, secure software development requires executive commitment, ongoing process improvement, education and training from VPs to product managers to developers to testers, tools to aid in detecting security vulnerabilities, and incentives and consequences to ensure everyone adheres to the SDL process. As was previously indicated, this presentation focuses on the Microsoft source code annotation language and how annotations can be used to improve the results reported by static code analysis tools. With respect to specific phases of the Microsoft SDL, this presentation focuses on the implementation and verification phases. The Microsoft source code annotation language is a set of annotations that help describe how a C or C++ function uses its arguments, the assumptions made, and the execution guarantees that the function provides. There are two implementations of the source code annotation language. The first is DecalSpec syntax, which is supported in both Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 and Microsoft Visual Studio 2008. The second is attribute syntax, which is supported only in Microsoft Visual Studio 2008. The examples shown in this presentation use DecalSpec. There are two classes of annotations, buffer annotations and advanced annotations. Buffer annotations provide information on how functions will use pointer arguments, whereas advanced annotations provide additional information about functions that are not expressible by buffer annotations. We will discuss each of these types of annotations in more detail and see how annotations can be used to improve the security of applications built using the guidance, process, and tools of the Microsoft SDL. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation focusing on source code annotation language, are being shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. When analyzing code, static code analysis tools must make certain assumptions regarding the code being analyzed. Whenever those assumptions are incorrect, any vulnerabilities reported based on those assumptions may result in false positives. Furthermore, in the absence of detailed information about how a function uses its arguments, static code analysis tools often miss vulnerabilities. This results in the generation of false negatives. Both false positives and false negatives require extra effort from developers to investigate erroneous findings and may degrade the confidence developers have in the static code analysis tool used. With enough false positives or false negatives, developers may stop using a static code analysis tool altogether. Source code annotations help static code analysis tools such as the Microsoft Visual Studio slash Analyze feature and Microsoft Prefast find more vulnerabilities with less false positives and less false negatives. The additional detail provided by source code annotations enable static code analysis tools to draw more accurate conclusions regarding the source code being analyzed. Annotating code yields benefits that extend beyond security. By annotating code, developers must document assumptions and behaviors of functions that they are implementing. In some cases, annotations can help developers discover assumptions that they may have made incorrectly. For developers using annotated functions, Annotations can help them better understand the expected behavior of those functions and reduce any confusion. Annotating source code requires a relatively small amount of effort and can help developers and testers find more vulnerabilities earlier in the software development lifecycle. This is beneficial because the cost of fixing a vulnerability earlier in the software development lifecycle is much less than fixing a vulnerability later in the software development lifecycle. It should be noted that while annotating code can significantly improve the results returned by static code analysis tools, 
Annotations, like any other defense measure, should not be regarded as a silver bullet. Annotations will help to find a large number of vulnerabilities, but it cannot be used to find all possible vulnerabilities. The first class of annotations that will be discussed is buffer annotations. This type of annotation describes pertinent information about a particular buffer argument, such as the location of the buffer, its size, and how the function uses that buffer. Annotations in this class are useful for detecting buffer overruns which are among the most serious vulnerabilities known to date. Annotations found within this class are divided into seven main categories. The categories are optional, indirection, direction, size, size units, initialization, and null termination. Each of these categories will be discussed in more detail later in this presentation. The first buffer annotation category is the optional category. This category indicates whether or not a buffer argument can be null. The annotation opt is used to indicate if a buffer argument is allowed to be null. If no annotation is specified, then it is assumed that the pointer to the buffer must not be null. Here is sample code that illustrates the use of the opt annotation. In this sample code, a function called optional sample is declared which takes one argument called buff, which is appointed to a t-char type. The annotation opt here indicates that buffer can be null. The annotations found in the indirection category are used to describe the level of indirection of an argument or return value. If no annotation is specified, then it is assumed that the argument p is the buffer pointer. When the annotation deref is specified, this means that the pointer argument p is a pointer to a buffer and that it must not be null. The last annotation in this category is the deref opt, which indicates to that the pointer argument p is a pointer to a buffer and that the pointer may be null. Here is sample code that illustrates the use of the deref annotation found in this category. In this sample code, a function called indirection sample is declared. Indirection sample has two arguments, cb, which is a size t-type, and ppv, which is a pointer whose dereference will be a buffer of type t. The deref annotation declared on the ppv argument means that ppv must not be null. The annotations found in the direction category indicates in what direction a function will use a buffer argument. For instance, if the in annotation is specified, this will indicate that the function will only read from the given buffer and not write into the buffer. Conversely, if the out annotation is specified, this will indicate that the function intends to write into the buffer, but not read from it. If the in out annotation is specified, this will indicate that the function will read and or write to the buffer. Here is sample code that illustrates the use of the in annotation found in this category. In this sample code, a function called direction sample is declared, which takes one argument called PSC string. This annotation simply specifies that PSC string argument will only be read from and not written to by the direction sample function. The annotations found in the size category indicate the explicit counts for the size and length of a buffer argument. Annotations in the size category are used in conjunction with other buffer annotation categories, such as the size units and the initialization categories. The first annotation, size, indicates the total size of the buffer. The second annotation, size, comma, length, is very similar to the first annotation in this category. However, it also has a length component which indicates how much of the buffer is initialized by the function. Examples of how to use the size annotation will be shown when the size units in the initialization categories are discussed. The annotations found in the size units category are used to describe the total size of a buffer argument. Annotations found in this category indicate whether the specified buffer size is referring to element count versus byte count. The E count annotation is used to indicate element count, and the B count annotation is used to specify byte count. Whenever annotations from this category are used, they must also be accompanied by the in 
out or in out annotations as described in the direction category. Here is sample code that illustrates the use of the eCount annotation from this category. In this sample code, a function called sizeUnitsSample is declared, which takes two arguments. The first argument consists of a pointer to a tchar type called buff, and the second is an integer called cchbuff, which is used to describe the character count of buff. To explicitly indicate to this to static source code analysis tools, the buff argument has been annotated with the out eCount cchbuff annotation. Recall that annotations from different categories can be combined together, so out eCount cchbuff is actually the annotation out from the direction category, then followed by the eCount from the category discussed here. The cchbuff component in this annotation is taken from the size category and indicates that the cchbuff argument holds the size of the argument buff. The annotations found in the initialization category are used to describe how much of a buffer argument will be initialized by a function. The full annotation indicates that the entire buffer will be initialized, whereas the part annotation indicates that only part of the buffer will be initialized by the function. Note that the part annotation can only be used with output buffers. Here is sample code that illustrates the use of the part annotation from this category. In this sample code, a function name initialization sample is declared, which takes three arguments. The first argument, buff, is annotated with out eCount part count count out. What this annotation indicates is that buff is a buffer with count elements and it will be partially initialized by the function. The length of that initialization will be specified in count out. The annotations found in the null termination category are used to indicate whether the presence of a null termination character should be used to indicate the end of valid elements in a buffer. The first annotation, Z, specifies that a null terminating character indicates the end of the buffer. The second annotation, NZ, does the opposite by indicating that the buffer may not be null terminated. Here is sample code that illustrates the use of the z annotation from this category. In this sample code, a function called null termination sample is declared, which takes a single pointer argument called buff. The variable buff is annotated with in z, which indicates that the function will only read from buff and that buff will be null terminated. There may be some function behaviors that are not expressible by buffer annotations. Advanced annotations provide an additional set of annotations that can be used to enrich existing annotations or describe conditional or complex behaviors. Advanced annotations are declared independently of buffer annotations as shown with this sample function called free strings. This function requires a single argument called stirblock, which is a LPTCH type. The argument stirblock has been marked with two annotations. The first is a buffer annotation, which is shown here in green on the left, and the second is an advanced annotation, which is shown here in yellow on the right. Again, advanced annotations are used to describe function behaviors that may not be expressible by buffer annotations. While these annotations may not be specifically focused towards finding buffer overruns, developers are still encouraged to use these annotations as they can assist in finding other types of code vulnerabilities. The check return annotation, for example, specifies that the return values from the annotated function must not be ignored by callers. Return values can provide important information about the success or failure of a function. It is important to always check return values for functions that perform write and read operations from buffers. The check return annotation can help enforce this practice. Another example is the format string annotation, which indicates that the argument is a string that contains percent markers in the style of printf. Whenever untrusted data is read that may contain percent markers and then provided as an argument into the printf family of functions, a vulnerability known as a format string vulnerability can occur. Using this annotation can assist static code analysis tools
to identify this type of vulnerability that may exist in code. To use the source code annotation language in your C or C++ applications, the first requirement is to include the sol.h header file. This header file contains all the macros required to use source code annotation language. The second requirement is applications must be compiled with versions of Visual Studio that support the analyze compile time flag. The source code annotation language can also be used with Microsoft Prefast, which is a standalone static code analysis tool distributed with the Microsoft Device Driver Kit. Additional information about Prefast can be found at the URL shown here. Let's now take a look at a demonstration of the source code annotation language and how it can be used to help static code analysis tools better detect vulnerabilities. In this demonstration, we will use the Microsoft source code annotation language with Microsoft Visual Studio to enhance the vulnerabilities reported by the slash analyze code analysis feature. Here is sample C application code that in addition to the main entry point tmain declares a function called fillString that contains a buffer overflow vulnerability. Three arguments are given to fillString. The first is appointed to a tchar called buff, the second argument is the size of buff, and the last argument is the character to fill buff with. FillString simply takes the buffer pointer, the de declared size, and writes the character ch cch buff times into buff. The main function is declared below fill string and creates a tchar buffer of size 256. It then calls fill string and passes it buff, size of buff, and the null terminating character as a character to fill buffer with. If you examine the tmain code, you will see that the buffer buff is declared as a tchar with 256 elements. Fill string is then called and passed buff as the buffer to fill, size of buff as the size of buffer, and the null terminating character as the character to fill buff with. Do you see what's wrong with this code? The answer is that since buff was declared as a tchar, which is a macro for a Y character or Unicode, when size of buff is called, it will actually return 512. This will instruct fillString to write 512 elements into buffer that has a maximum capacity of 256 elements, which will lead to a buffer overflow. Let's now run the Microsoft Visual Studio code analysis option against this project. Note that the Microsoft Visual Studio code analysis feature has emitted a warning that the code might have a mismatch between character counts versus byte counts. The code analysis engine does not have enough information about the fill string function to properly conclude that a buffer overflow vulnerability exists. Let's now see how we can use Microsoft's source code annotation language to annotate the fill string function. The extra information provided by the annotation will allow the code analysis engine to properly conclude and report that the code is affected by a buffer overflow vulnerability. The annotation that we will use to add to the fill string function is the annotation out ecount CCH buff. This annotation tells the code analysis engine that the buff argument is a buffer that fill string writes into and that the element count of this buffer is specified by the CCH buff argument. Without this annotation, the code analysis engine has no way of knowing that the CCH buff corresponds to the element count of buff. However, with this annotation, it does and can better analyze the code for vulnerabilities. Let's see how this new annotation improves the reported issues returned by the code analysis engine.
Let's go ahead and add the new annotation. And run the Microsoft Visual Studio Code and Else feature again and see how it differs with our results. Note that the code analysis engine was now able to detect that the fill string function contained a buffer overflow and is able to correctly inform the developer of this. In the previous demonstration, buffer annotations were used to help code analysis tools to determine that in fact a buffer overflow existed in the fill string function. Let's now see how advanced annotations can also be used to find code vulnerabilities. MyAlloc is a function that reads two arguments, a pointer to a t-chart called buffer and a size t called size. MyAlloc dynamically allocates size memory blocks for buffer if size is not zero and provides a return value to indicate the success or failure of the allocation. It is important that callers of this function pay attention to this return value. If the allocation was not successful and the buffer is read or written into, then a crash is possible. Here is another function call, call myalloc and fill string, which does as it describes. It calls myalloc to allocate memory to a pointer to a tchar, and then calls fill string to fill that buffer with 256 instances of the letter A. The problem with this code is that myalloc is called, but its return value is never checked. If the call to myalloc fails, then buff will be null, and while fill string tries to write into buff, it will crash because it will try to index into a null pointer. As you saw earlier, the code analysis tools were not able to detect this. Let's now annotate the myalloc function. We have now annotated the myalloc return value with the check return annotation. With this annotation, code analysis tools will look for calls to myalloc where the return value is ignored and report these instances. Run the Microsoft Visual Studio code analysis again and see the results. Notice how the report from the code analysis engine now includes the instance where code call my alloc and fill string has called my alloc but failed to read the return value. If you are not using a version of Microsoft Visual Studio that is capable of code analysis, you can still make use of Microsoft's source code annotation language if you are using Microsoft Prefast. Prefast is a Microsoft standalone static code analysis tool used to assess C and C++ applications. Here you see the almost exact same code that you saw in the previous demonstration. A function called fillString is defined along with the main function. 
Fill string takes three arguments, a pointer to a buffer, an integer that indicates the size of the buffer, and the character with which to fill the buffer with. As you can see with the main function, a fixed length buffer of wchar t of 256 elements is declared. That buffer is given to fill string as the buffer argument size of buff is provided to specify the size of the buffer, and the null terminating character is used to indicate the character to fill buff with. The problem is that size of buff will return 512 and not 256 since buff is of type wchar t. In essence, we are asking fill string to write 512 elements into a buffer that is, has a capacity of 256 elements, which results in a buffer overflow vulnerability. Let's run prefast on this code and see if it's able to detect this code vulnerability. Here you see that Prefast has emitted one warning about the sample code. The warning indicates that the second argument, called with size of buff, might refer to an array of Y characters. Since Prefast has no way of knowing that CCH buff refers to an element count of the argument buff, it cannot conclude that a buffer overflow vulnerability exists in fill string. Let's now see how annotating the sample code can assist Prefast to detect the vulnerability in the sample code. The annotation that is specified here for the buff argument is out ecount CCH buff. This tells the code analysis tools that this argument is an output argument that will be written by the fill string function and that element count of the argument is specified by the CCH buff argument. Armed with this annotation, Prefast should now be able to deduce that a buffer overflow vulnerability exists in the sample code. Notice how Prefast was able to correctly deduce that a buffer overflow vulnerability exists in the sample code thanks to the annotation that was added to the fill string function. The use of source code annotation language, decal spec syntax or attribute syntax, is not formally required for applications developed in alignment with the Microsoft SDL. The following are annotation recommendations as prescribed by the Microsoft SDL to help produce safer and more trusted applications. The first is to start annotating new code. Any new code developed should be annotated to improve results from static code analysis tools. Existing code should also be annotated over time. The second recommendation is to annotate the prototypes of functions that write to buffers. Functions that write to buffers are highly susceptible to buffer overflow vulnerabilities and should be annotated whenever possible. The third recommendation is to annotate the prototypes of functions that read from buffers. Reading from buffers is not as prone to buffer overflow vulnerabilities as writing to buffers. However, reading from buffers can significantly affect the security posture of an application. For example, an application function that tries to dereference a pointer to a buffer without checking first to ensure that the pointer is non-null can crash. This crash may cause the application to become non-responsive to legitimate users, therefore resulting in what is referred to as a denial-of-service attack. Finally, use annotated headers whenever possible. Any code that references an annotated function will also gain the benefits of annotation.
Microsoft has annotated the C runtime functions found in, in Visual Studio 2005, Visual Studio 2008, and in the latest Windows Software Development Kit to help developers developing on Microsoft platforms produce safer and more trustworthy code. This concludes the discussion on the Microsoft source code annotation language. Current static code analysis tools must make certain assumptions about the code that they are analyzing. Whenever those assumptions are incorrect, the results reported by the analysis tools may be inaccurate or missing. In either case, these erroneous results degrade the confidence developers have in their static analysis tools and may eventually result in those tools not being used at all. The Microsoft source code annotation language provides a set of annotations to describe how a function uses its arguments, the assumptions made about those arguments, and the guarantees provided by the function. This information can be leveraged by static code analysis tools to provide more accurate findings. Annotating code requires minimal upfront effort and can help developers find vulnerabilities earlier in the software development lifecycle where the cost of addressing such vulnerabilities is much lower. While the source code annotation language will not enable static code analysis tools to uncover all possible vulnerabilities in C and C++ applications, it can be used as an effective way to enhance those tools. There are currently two classes of annotations found in the source code annotation language, buffer annotations and advanced annotations. While the buffer annotations are designed to help detect buffer overflow vulnerabilities, advanced annotations should still be used as they can describe complex information about functions not expressible by buffer annotations. Furthermore, Advanced annotations can help enforce certain best practices when using high-risk functions and can assist in detecting other vulnerability types. Applications that are developed using the Microsoft SDL are currently not required to use the source code annotation language. Microsoft, however, still encourages developers to use annotations along with other defensive measures to help them de develop safer and more trusted applications on Microsoft platforms and technologies. Lastly, the insights gleaned by Microsoft, which are incorporated in its SDL, and more specifically in this presentation, which is focused on source code annotation language, have been shared with each of you as a way for our organization to enhance our application development practices and the security of our applications. This presentation content has been created by Eclipse Security LLC for Microsoft Corporation. For any questions or comments, please email inquiries at eclipsesecurityllc.com.